from God this morning. Hallelujah. You know, I'm just the vessel. I'm not the, the source. God is our source. Can you say amen? Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Well, this morning, the title of the message is Picking Up the Pieces. And the reason why I just feel like the Lord is placing these um, sermons on my heart is because people need to be encouraged, especially now. And, and I know most of us, if not all of us, have been going through things or we've gone through things and just all kinds of crazy things that are happening in our nation, in this world, and in our personal lives. And, and I want to encourage, I believe God wants to encourage the body, his body. You know, I sent out a thing on Facebook last week um, to encourage the pastors and ministers. Um, being a minister and being a pastor and uh, to be in the ministry in this last year and a half to two years is kind of a challenge. Um, you know, you're told that you can't at first have more than 10 people in your building. I remember that. No more than 10. And um, I remember when uh, that the only way you could go to work is if you were an essential, essential, I guess it was, um, worker. And I remember going to work and I had to have this paper on my dashboard in case I got pulled over. I don't know if you all remember that, that you weren't supposed to be on the road unless you were just supposed to be on there. And, you know, all this stuff has gone on and, and, and all this wondering what tomorrow brings. And, you know, before the pandemic, if you really know, if you really realize that none of us knows what happens tomorrow other than by faith of what the Lord has told us. Amen. And so I believe the body of Christ especially needs to be encouraged, but outside the body of Christ needs to be encouraged. You know, last Sunday, it was really busy at work, and, and it was just really crazy, really crazy. And there was a lot of chaos. And, and I remember kind of yelling to my other cashiers. I said, come on, I need people on the, cash, on the registers. I need this and I need that. And by the end of the night, I was wiped out. And then I felt this yuckiness. And, and the point of it is, and, and, you know, if we're not careful, and I think we, we've have, this has happened in our nation, we become hostile towards one another because we believe differently or we say different things. And, and I just felt real bad that night because I said, this is not how I want to work in a hostile environment or being a part of that, whether I'm saying, come on, we need, you know, screaming and shouting. That is not of God, y'all. We, we serve the Prince of Peace. And in Romans, it says the God of peace will soon crush Satan under our feet. And see, this is what the devil's doing right now. He's causing people to argue with one another and to be hostile and, and say mean things. And, you know, you watch on the news that somebody went to Jack in the Box and, and he cut in line before another car, and, and, but he backed out. And the person who he cut in front got out of the car with a gun and went right to that car and blew that person away over a position in, in a spot, a drive through spot going to Jack in the Box. Now, whether you like Jack in the Box or not, <laughs> you know, I don't think it's that good or any fast food restaurant is that good to kill somebody over. But that's what's going on in our world right now. And if we're not careful, we can, it's very contagious. We can get involved in it. And we can, you know, the Bible even says, and James says, where there's strife, there's all kinds of evil. There's all kinds of evil where there's strife. And I hate strife and because it just wears you out. It wears you out. Have you ever been in a, a really intense situation and, and everybody's at each other and, and all this, you know, this arguing and stuff? And when it's all said and done, you're exhausted. Have you ever been there where you just felt exhausted? And then you think, was it really worth this? Amen. And so I just feel like God wants to encourage the people, the body of Christ, and those out there that are hurting. There's so many people out there hurting, you know, and, and they need to be encouraged. They need to be encouraged. And, and let's be the, the light of Christ to encourage those out there and encourage one another. Don't forget to encourage one another. Amen? Well, we're going to, again, it's picking up the pieces, and we're going to start in the book of Ruth. And it'll make sense when we get there. Heavenly Father, I thank you for your word this morning. I thank you for giving us ears to hear what you, Holy Spirit, are saying. I believe you've already been speaking to us. 
I've over, and I, I just sense your presence in this place today, Lord. Those who are watching this morning, that you're feeling the presence of God. You know, I want you to just take a second and just take a deep breath. <sighs> Letting go of everything that's trying to bind us up. I choose peace. The Prince of Peace. We choose you, Jesus. So, Lord, I, I want to continue to stay out of the way so that you will have your way or continue to have your way in this service today. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. So, in the book of Ruth, let's start in chapter 1 and verse 1. Hallelujah. Picking up the pieces. Picking up the pieces. In the days when the judges ruled, there was a famine in the land. Hallelujah. And a man from Bethlehem and Judah, together with his wife and two sons, went to live for a while in the country of Moab. He left his country. You know what the Bible says in Ecclesiastes? There's a season for everything. There's a season for war. There's a season for peace. There's a season of love, a season of hate. There's all these different seasons. And whatever season you're in right now, whether it's good or bad, if it's a bad season you feel like, just know that this is just a season. It shall pass. And, a, and the, the next season, I believe we're entering into a new season, a season of peace, a season of love, a, peace, a season of joy. And you're saying, well, Pastor Tony, how can you say that with everything going on? Because you know what? It's a choice. You can make a choice to live in peace or in turmoil or in this or hate and that. And you know what? I, I, I have to remind myself all the time, if, there's, if I can't say anything nice, then most of the time I don't need to say anything at all. If I can't love somebody and all I can do is just cut them down and and ridicule them, and do this and do that. You know, I don't need to be saying it. And I thought about it last Sunday. I said, you know what, that's not the way I want to lead. How can I be a good leader and be an example of Jesus? Because I'm not going to lead like that. I'm going to lead the way the Lord would have me lead so that I can be an example and I can make a difference. You know, Tony, you've even quoted me to saying this. I remember when I was asked years ago, um, why I wanted to become an elder of the church, a leader of the church, way back when, I remember. And I said, be, to make a difference. That's why I became a leader. To be a Christian. Why do we become a Christian? Because the forgiveness of our sins, to go to heaven, but to make a difference. That's why we're Christians. Not just so that we can say, well, I'm a Christian, but to make a difference on this earth for the kingdom of God. Are you with me this morning? So anyway, there was, a, there was a famine, and they left Bethlehem, and they went to Moab, a country not of their own, a country that worshipped other gods, but the one and only God. So they went. So it says, together with his wife and two sons, went to live for a while in a country of Moab. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Now Naomi's, in verse 3, now Naomi's husband died, and she was left with her two sons. They married Moabite women, uh, one named Orpah and the other Ruth, Ruth, after they had lived there about 10 years, both of the sons died. And Naomi was left without her two sons and without her husband. Her husband dies, then her two sons die. Man, that's pretty bad, isn't it? That's a pretty bad situation. Whatever you're in right now, I want you to know that the Lord is with you. He will see you through. He will carry you through. He will carry us through because he's always carried us through. He's always been with us and he always will be with us. He says he'll never leave us nor forsake us. He's always there. We're in the palm of his hand. Can you say amen? And when the devil says, oh, what are you going to do now? What are you going to do now? Then you can say, well, you know what? I don't know what I'm going to do now, but I know that the Lord is going to do something because he always does something. And my trust is in the Lord and I'm going to believe him. Can you say amen? See, the devil wants you to get into a place of fixing things. Now, there's nothing wrong about investigating things or Lord, OK, I, I have this situation. What do you want me to do? Hallelujah. And the Lord may give you little bits and pieces. And he says, well, I first want you to do this. And that's all he says. Well, what do you want me to do now? 
Well, what did he say for you to do? The last thing he told you to do, just keep on doing it until he tells you to do something different. Can you say amen? See, the Bible says that our footsteps are ordered of the Lord. Here's Naomi, and her footsteps are ordered of the Lord. Now, did God kill her husband, kill her sons? No. But, but she was called to the Lord. There was a purpose for her life. And everybody right now listening to my voice, there is a purpose for your life. God has a purpose for your life, Diane. God has a purpose for your life, uh, uh, Charlotte. God has a purpose for your life. I want you to hear that. God has a purpose for your life. Well, I'm, I haven't done anything great. You probably smiled at somebody the other day. That's pretty great, I think. You could have encouraged somebody from not committing suicide. I think that's pretty great. You became a mom. I think that's pretty great. Or a dad or whatever it is. You have a calling. You have a purpose on this earth. And whether you know it or not, you are affecting more lives than you know in a good way. Can you say amen? So let's go on. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. In verse 6, Thank you, Lord. It says, when she heard in Moab that the Lord had come to the aid of his people by, by providing food for them, Naomi and her daughter-in-law, daughters-in-law, prepared to return home from there. With her two daughters-in-law, she left the place where she had been living and set out on the road that would take them back to the land of Judah. Then Naomi said to her two daughters-in-law, go back, each of you, to your mother's home. May the Lord show kindness to you as you have shown to the dead or your dead and to me. May the Lord grant that each of you will find rest in the home of another husband. Then she kissed them and they wept aloud and said to her, we will go back with you to your people. Thank you, Lord. But Naomi said, return home, my daughters. Why would you come with me? Am I going to have any more sons who could become your husbands? Return home, my daughters. I'm too old to have another husband. Even if I thought there was still hope for me, even if I had a husband tonight, then I have given birth. Would you have waited until they grew up? And so there's a whole purpose of that. There's a whole um, system in the Jewish culture of that. And I don't want to get into that, but she's telling them, the daughter-in-law say, we'll go with you. And she's saying, you know what? I don't have anything to offer you. Go back to your homes. Let's go on. Are you with me this morning? Do you want to hear a word from the Lord this morning? Do you want to hear the Lord give uh, you direction in the next step for you to take? Can you say amen? Go to verse 14. At this, they wept again. Then Orpah kissed her mother-in-law goodbye, but Ruth clung to her. One was leaving, but another clung to her. Look, said Naomi, your sister-in-law is going back to her people and her gods. Go back with her. But Ruth replied, don't urge me to leave you or to turn back from you. Where you go, I will go. Where I stay or where you stay, I will stay. Your people will be my people and your God, my God. What is she saying? I have nothing back there. My past is the past. Somebody needs to hear this. There's nothing in your path past worth going back to because God has a future for you, a good future for you. You got to stop looking back and say, oh, I remember the good old days. You can remember the good times, but you know what? There's some more good times coming your way. God is leading you into some better times and better days. Can you say amen? Well, Pastor Tony, how can you say it with everything going on? You know what? My faith is in what's going on, isn't in what's going on. My faith is in Jesus, and my Lord has brought me this far. Your Lord has brought you this far. Why would he not take us all the way in? Can you say hallelujah? Can you say praise the Lord? I am not going to live in fear anymore. I live by faith and not by sight. Can anybody say hallelujah? Praise the Lord. It is time to get back to business and to serve the Lord, to grow the church, to get out there and be lights and be, make disciples of all nations. That's what the Lord commanded his disciples to do before he left this planet. Go out and make disciples of all nations. Can you say amen? 
So if he commanded them to go out and make disciples of all nations, then what does it mean to make disciples? Teach them his way. Can you say amen? You know what? And, you know, I don't want to get all political. I don't want to get all this. We, we can't live in a bubble for the rest of our lives, y'all. We can't live in a bubble for the rest of our life. Do what you need to do, and let's go on. Let's move on. Can you say hallelujah, praise the Lord? Now, I'm not getting your business. I'm not trying to tell you what to do. But you know what? For me, I'm ready to move ahead. I'm ready to move forward. I'm ready for our church to move ahead. Can you say amen? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Anybody with me today? It's time to move on. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. So she said, your people will be my people and your God, my God. When you die, it says, where you die, I will die. And there I will be buried. May the Lord deal with me, be it ever so severely. If anything but death separates you and me. You know what she's saying? Naomi, you got something I need. You are part of my purpose. You know what? I can't go back to where I was because that's not where my purpose is. You have something that will affect my purpose on this planet. Are you with me this morning? God has something for you to fulfill your purpose on this earth. Let's go on. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. It says, when Naomi realized that Ruth was determined to go with her, she stopped urging her. So the two women went on until they came to Bethlehem. Bethlehem means the house of bread. There was a famine in the land. They left Bethlehem and they went to Moab. Isn't it interesting that Naomi had to go to Moab to connect with Ruth? to fulfill her purpose and Ruth's purpose. You know what? You're not here by accident. You're not watching by accident. There is a purpose that the Lord wants to reveal to you today to begin the process or to remind you of your purpose. You know, that's just so strong in my life. You know what? You've got a purpose on this planet. And if you can connect with the Lord and say, Lord, show me my purpose. Help me fulfill my purpose. And you know what? When you realize and you connect with the Lord about your purpose, there will be nothing that can stop you from fulfilling your purpose. Because the devil will try all kinds of things to keep you from your purpose. But when he realizes that you have revelation of your purpose, then you can declare that no weapon formed against me shall prosper. Every word spoken against me will be proven wrong because I have a heritage. I have a purpose that the Lord wants me to fulfill on this earth. Devil, you ain't killing me because I have a purpose on this earth. My, the blood of Jesus covers me and my family and the blood of Jesus protects me from you, Satan. I'm going to stay under under the blood. I'm going to stay with Jesus. I'm going to stay connected to him. And Lord, I thank you. Just as we sang that song about soaring his um, wings of eagles, you know, it talks about the, the, the he, God is like a, a, a mother hen. It protects the chicks and protects the, the, the young. And that we soar like wings of eagles. We soar. Come on, y'all. We are not little chickens pecking on the ground. We are eagles soaring, going up higher, soaring Soaring. It is time for the children of God to soar like never before. Can you say amen? But you don't know what they say about me. You don't know what they've done to me. You don't know how they stole my promotion and how they did this and how they... Is your faith in them or your faith is in Jesus? My faith is in Him. He's brought us this far. People, you got to hear this over and over. Today, I want you to leave encouraged knowing that God has your back. He is a shield about you. He is a lifter of your head. He has called your footstep. He has put your footsteps in front of you. You have a footstep. You have a path to walk. And He's already provided. It's time to walk it out in Jesus' mighty name. I can't walk it if I feel stuck, can I? Or if I feel, can, you know, I feel like I'm, I'm all bound up and I feel like all this stuff, I'm going to move ahead. How about you? It's time to move ahead. Can you say hallelujah, praise the Lord? Let's move ahead. 
Whatever that means to you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So in verse 19, it says, So the two women went until they came to Bethlehem. When they arrived in Bethlehem, the whole town was stirred because of them. See, that's what's supposed to happen. Wherever you go, it's supposed to stir things up. You got the Holy Ghost, the power of God, the dunamis power in you. You're supposed to make a difference wherever you show up. They need to say, well, the blessing has arrived. Oh, oh, I just feel something is about you. There's just something about you that I want. Something about you, it just encourages me. People need to be stirred up when we show up, and not in a bad way either, but in a good way. The whole town was stirred because of them, and the women exclaimed, Can this be Naomi? And her name meant pleasant. Could this be, can this be Naomi? She said, Don't call me Naomi, she told them. Call me Mara, means bitter. Because the Almighty has made my life very bitter. I went away full, but the Lord has brought me back empty. Why call me Naomi? The Lord has afflicted me. The Almighty has brought misfortune upon me. Isn't it interesting that God always gets the blame? Isn't it amazing that the, de the de devil doesn't get the blame? God gets the blame when the devil did that. You know, like when there's a hurricane, you know, in, in, uh, down in New Orleans, Oh, God is judging New Orleans. Oh, he's judging New Orleans. No, God wasn't judging New Orleans. There was a hurricane coming, and it came. And the devil used it to kill many people. Jesus said the devil comes, the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But Jesus said, I came to give him life and more abundantly. Can you say amen? Things happen. And I know there's consequences for things we do. But you know what? Stop blaming God for what the devil's doing. Can you say amen? Your situation right now, God isn't doing it to you. It's the devil doing it. But the Bible says, let me just read that. In Romans 5.28, it says, And we know that in all things God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called, hallelujah, according to his pur purpose. So you know what? what the devil means for harm, God can turn it for your good, for his good, for his glory. Can you say amen? I want to encourage you today. We're going to leave different today. We're going to leave encouraged. We're not going to be blaming God for all this stuff that's going on. We're going to, we know who's doing it, but you know what? Let's not focus on who's doing this stuff. Let's get focused on the Lord and say, Lord, I know you got more for me. I thank you, Lord, that you're going to bring me through this. I thank you, Lord, that you're my healer. You're my provider. You supply all my needs. I thank you, Jesus. You never let me down and you're not going to start now. Can you say amen? Hallelujah. So she's, she's having a pity party. It's understandable. She's gone through a lot. Hallelujah. In verse 22, it says, so Naomi returned from Moab, accompanied by Ruth, the Moabite. It says her daughter-in-law arriving in Bethlehem at the barley harvest was beginning as the harvest season was beginning you know what i just sense right now we are entering into the harvest season we are entering into a harvest season she comes back she says i feel empty i feel like i have nothing isn't it interesting that god brought her back home just at the beginning of a harvest Ooh, come on, y'all. We are entering into a harvest. Well, how can you say, didn't you see the news about the economy? Didn't you see this? You know what? I don't live in that kingdom. We live in the kingdom of God. There is no lack in the kingdom of God. There is no sickness into the kingdom of God. There is no sadness into the kingdom of God. Well, how can you say, have you ever not done, been depressed? Yes, I have to fight a fear. I have to fight being down and out. But you know what? I live my head up to where my help comes from. My help comes from the Lord. Can you say amen? Can you say praise the Lord? I can look down. I can be down or I can get up and say, Lord, I thank you. It's time to soar. I thank you, Jesus. You got much more for me to do. I'm not going to be depressed. I'm too blessed to be stressed. And when I enter in and when you enter in, you can say the blessing has arrived because we are blessed and highly favored of the Lord. The blessing of Abraham is upon you. Can you say amen? I hope I'm stirring somebody up today to encourage you. 
You know, I was talking to somebody the other day, and, and I said, you know, the situation the Lord told me to just rejoice over. And it seems like a big old situation. And, I, and every time the devil said, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? What are you going to do? I'm going to rejoice because the Lord told me to rejoice over it. I'm going to rejoice until I see the success that the Lord said it would happen just to rejoice over it. What can I do? What can you do? Rejoice. It's a big situation. It seems impossible, but I don't know about you, but I serve a God for nothing is impossible with my God. My God, there is nothing impossible. And he also says in his word, for those who believe, there, it's not impossible. Nothing is impossible for those who believe. Is there any believers in the house today? Anybody watching today? You know what? For nothing is impossible for you because you believe. Amen? Do you get it? Are you getting it? You know what, y'all? We're not going to be on this earth forever. That's okay with me. <laughs> the older you get, you feel like, oh, that's okay. <laughs> now, as a kid and a teenager, you know, you feel invincible and you feel like it's going to be a long time. And it has been because I'm getting up there in age now. But you know what, y'all? This microphone is not going to heaven. That heater's not going to heaven. My bank account ain't going to heaven. My house isn't going to heaven. Your house is not going to heaven. Your brand new car isn't going to heaven. Your career is not going to heaven. Your millions and billions of dollars are not going to heaven. But one day we're going to heaven. Can you say amen? Let's go on a little bit farther. Are you getting anything today? Are you, I hope I'm stirring us up today. I'm getting stirred up by talking about this. Let's go on just a little bit more in the chapter 2. Now Naomi had a relative on her husband's side. A man standing uh, of standing whose name was Boaz. And Ruth the Moabitess said to Naomi, let me go to the fields and pick up the leftover grain behind anyone in whose eyes I find favor. You know what Ruth is saying? You know what? Nothing's going to stop us. Let me go out and do something. Are you with me? Let's go on a little bit further. Naomi said to her, go ahead, my daughter. So she's went out and began to glean in the fields behind the harvesters. As it turned out, she found herself working in a field belonging to Boaz, who was from the, her, uh, Naomi's husband's clan. And you know what? Why is this important? He owned the field. He owned the field that she went to glean in to pick up the leftover harvest. Just stay with me for a few minutes. So she goes to this field. Hallelujah. In verse 4, it says, just then Boaz arrived. Isn't it amazing? Boaz just shows up. Was it a coincidence? No, it wasn't a coincidence. It was a divine appointment. Get ready for some divine appointments. You're about to experience some divine appointments. Not coincidence, but divine appointment. God is setting us up for success. Not for failure, but for success. Can you say, hallelujah, praise the Lord. The devil is the one who's trying to cause you to fail. But God is a God who causes us to be successful. Can you say amen? Don't blame God for what's going on in the world. Blame the devil for what's going on in the world. And then say, my God is bigger than what's going on in the world. Going on in this and going on in that. I serve a big God. I've chosen to magnify him to make him bigger then my problems and my situations, are you with me? Thank you, Lord. Just then Boaz arrived from Bethlehem and greeted the harvesters. The Lord be with you. Man, that's a great leader right there. The Lord be with you. He, he, he speaks blessings over his people. The Lord bless you. They call back. That's a good workplace. Hallelujah. That's what I want to do. I was sent there to be a blessing, and I'm going with the blessing, and I'm going to declare blessings over the workplace that I have been sent to. The Lord bless you, they called back. Boaz asked the foreman of his harvesters, whose young woman is that? The foreman replied, she is a Moabite who came from Moab with Naomi. She said, please let me glean and gather among the sheaves behind the harvesters. She went into the field and has worked steadily from morning till now, except for a short rest in the shelter. 
So Boaz said to Ruth, now this is favor, y'all. So, so Boaz said to Ruth, my daughter, listen to me. Don't go and glean in any other field and don't go away from here. Stay here with my servant girls. Watch the field where the men are harvesting and follow along after the girls. I've told the men not to touch you and, whatever you, and whenever you are thirsty, go and get a drink from the water jars that the men have filled. Now that's favor, y'all. That is favor of God. That's what's supposed to happen with us, the children of God. We walk in favor. Favor ain't fair. Favor ain't fair. You know, you know I talk about, I got promoted, and, and the person I got promoted over was the one who applied for the job, and I applied for the assistant. And she had been there longer than I had. And I was there just to get promoted as her assistant. But you know what happened? God had me step over her and promoted me over her. God did that. That wasn't my intention. See, our God, and it, and it wasn't fair to her. She was upset about it. And, I wanted, and I've encouraged her and said, we're going to do this together. But let me tell you, favor isn't fair. If you're looking for those, well, it's not fair. When God is in it, he'll make it fair and he'll make it the way he wants it to be. He's just looking for people who will believe him. Can you say amen? Hallelujah. Let's go... And just uh, real quick, go to chapter four. We're going to get to the end of this, of what happened. There's a whole story. It's a beautiful story. You want to read the book of Ruth. But in chapter four, verse 13, hallelujah. So Boaz took Ruth and she became her wife. Now we're talking about picking up the pieces. You know what? Mo Ruth could have gone back to her own, her own town, her old town. But you know what? She saw something in Naomi that was her purpose. And she went with Naomi and she did what she needed to do to honor Naomi and to be a blessing to Naomi. And this is what the Lord did. So Boaz took Ruth and she became his wife. She became the wife of the one who owned the field. It says, then he went to her and the Lord enabled her to conceive and she gave birth to a son. The women said to Naomi, praise be to the Lord who this day has not left you without a kinsman redeemer. May he become famous throughout Israel. He will renew your life and sustain you in your old age. For your daughter-in-law who loves you and who is better to you than seven sons has given him birth. Then Naomi took the child and laid him on her lap and cared for him. Ooh, praise God. She lost her sons, but she gained a grandson and raised him as her own. And this is what happened after. Listen. Hallelujah. So the women living there said, Naomi has a son. And they named him Obed. He was the father of Jesse and the father of David, King David. Are you with me this morning? Ruth was used, her purpose was to have the lineage of Jesus Christ who came through David to come through her. And because she didn't give up, she just picked up the pieces and went on. Look what the Lord had done in her and through her. And the Lord will do the same for you. Just pick up the pieces and get back into the race. Get back into what God has said. Shake it off. Shake up despair. Shake off all that stuff. Let's move ahead. Can you say amen? Go to John 11 real quick. Picking up the pieces. Hallelujah. John 11. Thank you, Lord. Verse 1, the story of Lazarus. We're just going to skip through it. I want to make a point. Now a man named Lazarus was sick. He was from Bethany, the village of Mary and her sister Martha. This Mary, whose brother Lazarus now lay sick, was the same who poured perfume on the Lord and wiped her, his feet with her hair. So the sisters sent word to Jesus, Lord, the one you love is sick. Your friend is sick. When he heard this, Jesus said, the sickness will not end in death. No, it is for God's glory so that God's son may be glorified through it. Whatever you're going right through right now can be used for the glory of God. This can be used 
Not to destroy you, not to kill you, not to destroy all that. It's to, God can turn it around for his glory and for his purpose. It says, so the sister sent word, and we went through that. In verse 5, it says, Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. Yet when he heard that Lazarus was sick, he stayed where he was two more days. Then he said to his disciples, let us go back to Judea. But Rabbi, they said, a short while ago, the Jews tried to stone you, and yet you are going back there. Then in verse 11, after he had said this, he went on to tell them, our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, but I'm going there to wake him. His disciples replied, Lord, if he sleeps, he will get better. Jesus had been speaking of his death, but his disciples thought he meant natural sleep. So they told them, so he told them plainly, Lazarus is dead. And for your sake, I'm glad I was not there so that you may believe, but let us go to him. Hallelujah. In verse 20, it says, when Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went out to meet him, but Mary stayed at home. Lord, Martha said to Jesus, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But I know that even now God will give you whatever you ask. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Martha answered, I know he will rise again in the resurrection at the last day. Isn't it funny that we will put things off when the Lord says, I'm going to do something right now. I'm going to change your situation right now. And then we think about, well, maybe it'll happen one day. When the Lord says, now is the time. Now faith is. Now is the time. Today, today. I declare over us today. Today, over you today. Today is the day. And I know I say that all the time, but I'm going to promise. I'm going to declare today, 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 things are changing. Can you say praise the Lord? Can you say today, my situation is changing? Can you say today, 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 today is my day of victory? Can anybody say today? Say today. You need a breakthrough today. You may not be able to wait till tomorrow. You need it today. Today is a day. Today is a day. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Jesus says, I'm the power. Where does Jesus live, y'all? He lives inside us. The power, his power is inside you, not down the street, not a year from now. You've got Deuteronomy's power inside you. You've got the Holy Ghost inside you. You've got so much power. You don't realize what kind of power you have. I believe there's so many Christians out there don't even realize the power they have with their words. Where the power, the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead lives and dwells within us. Resurrection power raised him from the dead. He was dead. He was dead. He was dead. But the spirit of God raised him up. Can you say amen? Now stay with me. Are you with me this morning? Because you know what? We're moving ahead today. We're going ahead today. But you, did you not listen to the news? No, I don't listen to the news anymore. They just say the same things over and over and over. My faith isn't in the news. My faith is in Jesus. Can anybody say hallelujah, praise the Lord? Does anybody want to hear some good news for a change? Some good news for a change? Some good news for a change? Well, we're reading it right now. You're hearing some good news. Hallelujah. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me will live, even though he dies. And whoever lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? I believe it. Yes, Lord, she told him. I believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, who was to come into the world. And after she had said this, she went back and called her sister Mary. Hallelujah. Let's go on. Hallelujah. So Mary comes up in verse 32. 
When Mary reached the place where Jesus was and saw him, she fell at his feet and said, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. Some of us have been saying that, Lord, if only you would have answered my prayers. Lord, if only you would have showed up. Lord, if you'd only. And the Lord's saying, you've already given up on me. I'm the resurrection and the life. I got all the power and I'm inside you. Come on, let's do something about it, Jesus says. Hallelujah. When Jesus saw her weeping, the Jews who had come along with her also weeping, he was deeply moved. And then he says, where have you laid him? He asked, come and see, Lord, they replied. And then Jesus wept. Let's move on. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In verse 39, take away the stone, he said. But Lord, said Mary, there's all these buts. You know what? Pastor Kay preached a sermon years ago, and I love it. She said, get rid of the big buts. Because <laughs> we always have a but. Well, the word of God says I can do this, but get rid of the big buts. <laughs> Sorry. I'm not being disrespectful. Stop saying but and start saying what the word of God says and says, yes, Lord, you said you would do this, so it will happen. Let's go on. Take away the stone, he said. But Lord, said Martha, the sister of the dead man, by this time there is a bad odor, for he has been there for four days. He was dead. Can you say dead? Okay. Then Jesus said, did I not tell you that if you believe, you would see the glory of God? Is there any believers listening today? Is there anybody who believes the word of God? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Verse 41. So they took away the stone. Then Jesus looked up and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. I know that you always hear me, but I said this for the benefit of the people standing here, that they may believe that you sent me. When he had said this, Jesus called in a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out, his hands and feet wrapped with strips of linen and cloth around his face. Jesus said to them, take off the grave clothes and let him go. It is time to come out of the tomb. It is time to shake off the grave clothes. It's time. We are believers. The joy of the Lord is our strength. We, he goes before us and he makes a way where there seems to be no way. Then now is not the time to pack your bags and run. Now is the time to shake it off and let's move ahead. Let's go ahead. Let's go where Jesus tells us to go. Let's see what the Lord has in store for us. Can you say amen? Therefore, many of the Jews who had come to visit Mary and had seen what Jesus did put their faith in him. I've said this many times. We're almost done. I've said this many times. It is so important that people around us see us victorious, see us healed, see us prospering, see us with victory so that they will put their faith in Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Can anybody say amen? Can you say praise the Lord? Does anybody want to be successful? Does anybody want to walk in victory? Does anybody want to walk in health and healing? And do, Oh, we thank you, Lord. We thank you. we got a room full of believers in this place. we got believers watching us. And if you're not a believer, I pray that you'll become a believer because that's where it's at to believe in the Savior. Believe in Jesus, the Son of God. Just write this down. We just got a couple of scriptures and we're going to close. Philippians 4.4. 4, I want to read it out of the Amplified. This is what I've been standing on. Rejoice in the Lord always. Delight. Take pleasure in Him. Again, I say rejoice. Let your gentle spirit, your graciousness, unselfishness, mercy, tolerance, and patience be known to all people. The Lord is near. Ooh, that's a good word, isn't it? Then it goes on. Do not be anxious or worried about anything, but in every, everything, every circumstance and situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, continue to make your specific requests known to God. 
and the peace of God, the, that peace which reassures the heart, that peace which transcends all understanding, that peace which stands guard over your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus is yours. I say hallelujah, praise the Lord. Just write this down in Galatians 6, 9. It says, let us not become weary in doing good. For at the proper time, we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. What would have happened if Ruth gave up? God would have used somebody else. What would have happened if Jesus gave up or Jesus said, you know what, I'm not going to go to where Lazarus is because it's too hard. They tried to kill me. The disciples wanted to deter Jesus from going because the Jews tried to kill him. But Jesus had a, a divine appointment. He had a purpose. What would happen if you give up when the Lord has something spectacular, miraculous, supernatural. He wants to reveal His glory in your life. Don't give up now. We've come too far to give up. Has anybody come so far? And can you kind of look back in a sense and say, man, I've come a long way. Why would I want to go? I'm too far into it now. I'm too far out in the deep. I'm too far up high now to, for me to go low or go back there. What is there for us back there? There's nothing. Can you say amen? But the Lord has something. He says rejoice in Him. Be anxious for nothing. Stop pondering. Stop meditating on what the lack is and what defeat is. Start focusing. Start meditating on the glory of God, on His goodness. And I say it again. Let us not become weary in doing good. For at the proper time, we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. Ruth and Naomi came back during the beginning of the harvest season. They didn't give up. They came in when the harvest was beginning. I believe we've entered into a harvest season. Remember when the farmers go out to harvest the corn? It looks dead, doesn't it? It's all dried up. The wheat changed colors. It's not green and luscious anymore. It's brown. The harvest is ripe. It's ready. Things may look dead right now. That just means your harvest is ready to bring in. So this morning, it's time to pick up the pieces and let's move on. Let's move ahead. Let's move forward. Don't throw up your hands in Defeat, throw your hands up in worship and surrender your life to the Lord. Can you say amen? Can you say praise the Lord? In closing, as I have already several times, I remember when I first came to this church and I remember this was all new to me. They lifted up their hands as they worshiped. And I asked somebody, what does that mean? And they said, it means surrender. When I lift up my hands in worship, I'm surrendering to the Lord. Would you just lift up your hands this morning? Let's surrender to him. Let's let him fight our battles. Let him lead us and guide us. Let him show us the way. Let him have his way. So Lord, right now, we lift up our hands and we surrender to you. We declare that you are the Lord of all. Jesus, you're my Lord. You're my Savior. You're my all in all. I thank you that you are the Lord of the harvest. The Bible even says he's the Lord of the harvest. We serve the Lord of the harvest. And he says, we've entered into the season of harvest. He's the Lord of the harvest. He's, oh, thank you, Lord, for the harvest. We praise you.
We worship you. Even with our hands lifted up right now, wherever there's a need, whatever the person needs right now, whether it's they need victory, they need healing, they need prosperity, whatever it is, Lord, we lift up our hands and I thank you that you're pouring out your spirit right now and causing change to take place. I thank you for healing right now from that disease. In the name of Jesus, I declare you will not die, but you will live. I declare that disease, I curse it in the name of Jesus. And I declare right now, you are the living temple of the Holy Spirit. Spirit and the Holy Spirit lives and dwells with you. The resurrection power lives in you. You will live and not die. I declare today is your day of victory. From this moment on, victory, 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 victory. I declare the Lord says, Stop thinking about what you need to do. Start have praising me and worshiping me and thank you me for your victory. The Lord of the harvest is in this house. Your harvest is in this house. Your harvest harvest is in your house, in your house, in your house. The harvest, the Lord is speaking to you right now. The harvest is in your house. Whatever that means to you, the harvest is in your house. In Jesus' mighty name. Can anybody say praise the Lord? Anybody get anything out of this this morning? Can you say, yes, Lord, I believe and I receive. Hallelujah. If there's anybody here today or anybody watching that you do not know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, and today you want to ask Jesus into your heart, would you pray with me today? Would you pray, everybody? Say, Heavenly Father, forgive me of all my sins. I declare and I confess that Jesus is the Son of God who died for me. I ask you, Jesus, to come into my heart and my life and be my Lord and Savior forever. Amen. I'm saved. I'm going to heaven. Doesn't matter what anybody else says. What matters is what the Word of God says. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can you just lift up your hands one more time? I know I'm having you do this, but I just feel like God wants to see his people worship him. He wants to see his people surrender to him. He wants to pour out so much into his people, in their lives. and in Oh, thank you, Lord. Here we are. We're in a place for you to pour it out. Pour in us right now all that you have. Praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise you, Lord. Amen. Give God a big clap offering. We say goodbye to you today. Join us next week because I believe God has a mighty word. And we're entering into the season of Thanksgiving. The season of Thanksgiving. Let us be grateful. Let us be thankful for all that the Lord has done. Can you say amen? Hallelujah. Give him one more clap offering. God bless you. Hallelujah.